Hi everyone. Welcome to this week's Behind the Poem. I am admittedly working from a backup generator in my body and in myself. I'm going to share the poem I originally intended to share, but I'm going to expand the framing a bit. The poem is called Summer of Love. I'm leaning over to pick it up, which well, I can do in the next cut video clip, but um, it's called Summer of Love. I wrote it, I believe it was the summer of 2018. I was traveling a lot that summer on tour, performing, facilitating workshops around the United States at a lot of summer camps and other spaces. And I can't even remember what I was doing at LAX, which is an airport in Los Angeles, California. And I was, it, I was in the bathroom being <laughs> before, after a flight. I honestly, I don't remember, but I can see myself in the stall. And all of a sudden I had this memory of just like a very, a very, a very experience. We're not, we're not even going to qualify it. Um, that happened in the summer of 2004. It was the end of the summer. And I won't share too much of the details of it. Um, but the evening was like, indicative of the many ways my internalized misogyny has shown up throughout my life and the way I've related to cis men in my experience as a cis straight person and cis straight woman in sexual and romantic experiences. And I say cis men just because that has been my experience um, of the people I've dated and had sexual experiences with in this body, in this lifetime thus far. And, um, and so, um, so that's like the baseline of the poem is, I call that summer the summer of love. There were a lot of experiences I had um, a lot of suitors, a lot of dates, and I've been thinking about the essence of that internalized misogyny and the ways that does or does not still play out in my life with regards to dating. And so here's the like next layer. Um, it's a stretch and I might start to cry because I always do. <laughs> um, it's a stretch, but I think it's interconnected. Um, so I'm pretty active on Twitter. I've experienced everything on Twitter from death threats and harassment and abuse that has included all different kinds of harassment and discrimination. And I've also incre experienced incredible, powerful joy and community building on Twitter as well. And so for those that aren't on Twitter, uh, it's imploding. Uh, this guy named Elon Musk purchased it for $44 million. And on day one, he walked into Twitter headquarters carrying a sink. And um, I have no evidence to base this on, but I feel pretty strongly that he knew what he was doing and he walked in with a sink because he intended to sink Twitter. And I also feel pretty strongly, again, with no case-based evidence, but feels like logical um, speculation based on the way history repeats itself and people in power tend to behave. Um, I'm gonna guess that was his intention all along. It just like seems too obvious of a strategy to like buy a platform that has been responsible for some of the largest progressive movement building in the last many years. 
And, um, and so how does this connect to my poem? Internalized misogyny is a heck of a thing. And the fact that we as a society make space to worship and pedestal rich cis white men, in this case, Elon Musk, simply because of the money they have imperialistically accrued it's got to be built on some kind of internalized some shit, you know? Or maybe you don't know. I'm working on not doing the you knows. I was so good. Five minutes in. <laughs> Six minutes in. Um, and so I'm thinking about that when I share this poem now. And uh, I'll say one more thing, which is that my spiritual beliefs are that we are all of us divine and we are all of us the divine within. And I believe that all violence and oppression on this planet, both to each other and the planet and ourselves is because we don't honor our holiness and um, I'll leave it at that. So here's the poem. Summer of Love. I think of you on a Wednesday. The dance floor. We are 21. I end the night with a bouncer pounding his fist on the top of the covered table, ushering me to leave. I remember this in a bathroom stall at LAX how the last best summer of my life was then, 14 years ago, even though it ended with me walking into a 303 cab straight home to the suburbs. I call it the summer of love because so many men fell for me in the swollen heat. I'd like to think I love myself now far more than they did then. Not that thrusting my shins against the floor of a nightclub, my cheeks choking my self-worth strangled by my tongue, isn't a metaphor for how I felt about myself at the time. As if sucking a stranger's dick had nothing to do with not knowing how to hold the hungry lust shoving him down my throat for every man flying across the country to want me as their own. And to them, I gave nothing of myself. I couldn't even swallow their respect. So here I was on my knees, praying to a man I'd never met because I did not yet know that I was God. Thank you. Let's take a deep breath. You want to join me? <laughs> but like literally, is there a behind the poem where I haven't cried? <laughs> They're like, might not be. But I like get in my body and say the things that are, I, and I just weep. Um, thanks for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever it is you're up to in the world, I hope you know that you are holy, 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 and divine. Take care. <laughs>